what's going on this is jimmy hey this is rachel what's we are on, back we're back i am so excited to see you all i mean i actually missed y'all last week yes it, we did we both did i mean thank those of you who were able to tune in briefly when we did the uh, radio segment we were on uh 106 um online live radio. yeah live radio and you know facebook was tripping right? it wasn't it wasn't facebook we found out that it was actually the uh, was? internet from the hotel yeah, oh the, okay their wi-fi was i was take that back facebook out. yeah it wasn't facebook so it was the internet that yeah. was on and off at the hotel yeah. and so you know but we're just so happy because and i told jimmy i was like you know i actually miss um getting on with my people you know it gets to the point where it's like now we have a set date appointment mm -hmm. to come talk to you guys and so just happy to be back um we're rested and you know have plenty of sun and relaxation yeah and now it's time to just celebrate back. eight years of marriage eight years of marriage six 24 12. Six, 24 12. there's something about that that i like i don't know if i've ever told you no you but, haven't you know the teacher in me, even though I'm not a math teacher. Six twenty-four. Math 12. and science are related. Six okay. times two is twelve. Twelve gotcha. times two is twenty-four. 20. Gotcha. So it's just, you know, there's just a lot of harmony in that for me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, we're so glad that you guys um, have come to join us today. You know, we 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 got some stuff to talk about today. Oh yeah, we're gonna yes. talk about a, a very favorite subject of a lot of people of a lot of people yeah um and then we're gonna for some people this is a taboo you know, taboo subject and for others it's a stressful subject because you know but nonetheless and for some it's, it's connected to you know trauma and right, different things right, so right. we always want to be sensitive to that as well and and of course um i've found one of the best ways to deal with tough subject is to sort of laugh through it as well too and oh. i'm sure rachel is going to give you all plenty of comedy as she usually does See, you know my husband he's real slick <laughs> Whoa, sure. he likes to put things on me as <laughs> if i am the catalyst or you know but he he is the stimuli he, he he puts something out there and then when i bite then all of a sudden he tried to act like he's trust crying. me the people those know. of you knew who that's right thank the you people yeah know. it was perfect those they of you know. who know jimmy rogers hmm. you already know that you know why this is truly um rrt <laughs> ministry um yes by the way let me just say that for those of you who have friends um we've been asking for them to change our title on our page from jimmy and rachel rogers to yeah. rrt ministry right and he requested that a long time ago and they finally did it. So you can just simply find us at RRT Ministry, Relationship Real Talk. Yeah. And I want to take the time right now. Those of you, you, we have some faithful watchers. I want you to take the time right now. And I want you to share this to your page. So we're just going to pause for the cause. I need everybody to go to your share button. Press it. And then share. You can share to your groups. You can share to your friends. Think about the top three people that need to hear this conversation in your life. Shoot, share it to your husband. If he's not listening with you, your wife. There you, you go. Know, your, your, your significant other. Mm -hmm. Share mm -hmm. at this time. All right. Angela said, done. done. Let me tell That's you. my girl. Johnny on the spot. Johnita on the spot. <laughs> Johnita. <laughs> so, yes, we appreciate that. Uh, feel free to comment. That's one thing about our, our, our um, viewers. They don't have a problem commenting. <laughs> they don't have a problem giving us some some laughs, some hearts, some likes. But it just really helps to know we're not sitting in this living room talking alone. Talking to ourselves. Talk, I mean, although, you know, some people do talk to themselves all the time. <laughs> sure the, but we sure the point don't in? want, I mean, what you, I mean, if you feel oh, in wow. that energy, receive it. <laughs> but, um. Told you jokes. I mean, I'm just saying, like <laughs> oh, you said, really? am I pointing to you? Oh. And so wow. don't forget to rep your city, you know, especially if you're new here on this uh, broadcast, go ahead and tell us where you're listening from. You know, we always like to see where this ministry reaches out to. Uh, this is a Christian ministry, but we do realize there are people who are not Christians that may tune in. So we're not going to preach to you. So we're not going to preach to you. However, these principles, although they're biblically based, they are principles that you can apply regardless of what your right. religious affiliations are. So we wanted to make sure 
we put that out there. Oh, thank you, Melanie. She says she hoped we enjoyed our anniversary. Well, with the last name Rogers, we appreciate that. Yes, Melanie. you're always giving her props Missouri for that last City, name. Texas. Texas. Yes. yes. All right now. You, you were in left. Texas not too yes, long ago. Yes, we went fishing. He's been in doing Texas. a lot of traveling, you know. <laughs> we might have to get him tested. I do. Um, I do you was real say soon. That, yeah. You know, sure. I might have to get tested just coming back from oh, South goodness. Carolina. Apparently, there, even though we did practice social distancing and other folk act like COVID wasn't going on, we we had those masks on and stayed our distance uh, away from folk. Yeah, as much as possible. All well, right, baby, well, what, go ahead. What, what are we talking about today? Go on, let them know. Well, we're going to talk about one of the most talked about subjects in a marriage, other than cheating, mm. is sex. Yep. And we're going to discuss the common questions that couples might have. Now, please understand this. Um, there's no way to hit every single topic as it relates to this. Not enough time. So I believe my husband, if he did what he said he was going to do, mm -hmm. there's several resources with links. Um, there's a link that has the different questions, some of the questions that we're using today. Mm -hmm. But questions that you and your significant other might want to sit down and ask one another because sometimes it could be uncomfortable. Some people are very open and honest and can talk about sex with no problem. It's a part of life. And others have been taught it's so bad that right. they're, they're afraid to talk about it, even when it's quote unquote legit and they're married. Exactly. Um, so, you know, come on in the living room. If you'd like to go live with us um, and share your thoughts, we want you to type into the chat. I want to come in the living room. Uh, we'll send you an invite in Facebook Messenger. And just as soon as everything connects, you click on the link and, and follow the instructions. Bring we'll bring you on in for you to, whether it be ask your question or give your comment. But uh, this time together is, Jimmy and I always talk about this afterwards. It's most pleasurable and significant when we have interaction from the audience. Amen. So we're we're Amen. always, you know, I mean, we have our experiences, but we learn every day from right. other people as well that's right. so that's a part of the the learning experience listen is, is not having um i, I heard a, a a saying a while ago it says um you can even learn from a fool in other words what they were saying was have mercy let's not limit where we believe we can learn we can learn from anybody. listen and so and um, I, and i've taken that to heart and i do i watch and study people and i learn all the time but the people on this on this live and this feed, this broadcast, have always brought us some very, very good feedback. And it has really um, enhanced um, our abilities to see things from different... You okay? I'm so sorry, y'all. You, you almost look like you had Tourette's right now. And I was yeah. waiting we, on the we're, Listen, we are not going to talk about this. <laughs> and, and all Tourette's is not manifested in cuss words. I apologize for my the ignorance of my husband right now. <laughs> but there there's uh, fruit flies. It, it's not a whole bunch, but there's always that one. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Uh, and I just can't stand it. But I was just going to say what you're saying is so true. I think that's one of the first things, you know, as I'm talking as an educator with my students. That's oh, now you doing it. it just yeah. right here. Now, now you you must have a problem. Um, but yes, I tell them that I am not the only teacher in the classroom. And as a teacher, if you start to think that you're the only one that can impart knowledge, mm. you literally limit the growth of yourself and your students. And, oh, wow. and it stifles them. They don't want to share. They don't want to participate in the learning process. I think I'm a lifelong student. That's how I like to think of myself. You know, yeah. that, that's just one of those educator terminology that we know well, lifelong. That. My educators, just give me some love if you out there, you know, you could be an educator at heart. Um, but uh, did you see what, what our goddaughter said? Yeah, she told me, nope, I ain't joining the call, but I'm listening. That's my daddy. No, nah, I, I can't. can't. <laughs> you know what, Dion? I don't blame you. Uh, uh, you. You do whatever the spirit tells you to do today. If you, if you change your mind, we'll accept it, and I'll try to keep pinching him Hodge. to keep him quiet. What's going on? What's that? Classy. Sissy. Yeah. That's Sissy Hodge, baby. Oh. You, you, did you get your see. new pair of glasses? Yeah, they <clears throat> That she's supposed to get. Hush, girl. Baby, you know, we can leave the reading to me if you like. <laughs> I'm good with that. Oh, yes, you're in classic okay. mode. Okay, okay. Let's go ahead. And get I started. mean, it's been two weeks. and and it, it has. And guys, let me just go ahead. I'm going to put myself out there because I don't mind doing that. I'm kind of keeping my arms like this because I realize I don't do well with gray shirts. And I don't know why I picked out the gray shirt today. So if y'all just see a little sweaty armpit, just ignore it. And understand that I've already put myself out there and I'm aware. 
I, it was just too late by the time I realized, you know. No worries, baby. Are you the one told me about the, the sweats. Now you're telling me no, no worries. No worries. You're like, no Rachel, judgment. you got your thing. Put your arm down. People could see it. Hey, you, know, you know, they flipped the script on you at the last minute. Yes. Okay, baby, go on. But, but before go we get started, I do want to remind, I want to remind all the viewers that there are links in the description. And I, honestly, I would love for you guys to read both of those articles because I think both of these articles are very, very enlightening. And it will give us um as it hopefully you all what it gave me was a lot more clarity on these two subjects that the links are talking and it's about. a wonderful because it can be an awkward conversation i mean like we said every couple is different it's a wonderful way to have talking points mm -hmm. that's neutral and you know nobody felt like it had to come from them right um right. dr Hodge, she says she missed seeing us uh at church mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm sure we miss everybody because nobody's <laughs> We're there, but it's Dr. Hodge. Thank you. Yes. So good to uh, yes, that you could uh, join us and 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 take part of this living room conversation. All right, baby, what you got for him? Well, I'm gonna let well, you the, the, heavy hit the first. With this. The first question, you know, when it comes to sex, and I know um, we have a, tons of questions about sex, especially marriages. But we we're gonna deal with these. We we chose five out of a lot of them. But we'll, yeah. when you all go back and read the articles, you can kind of discuss that amongst yourselves, you and your significant other. But the first one is, is connecting emotionally before you have sex important um, to you? If so, how would how you would like you connect? to connect? You, you have you that know? question for yeah, me? Yeah, I mean, and mm -hmm. I, I think that is a very, very important question to ask because a lot of times, a lot of times people just don't know how to connect with their significant other you and, know and, yeah and and mm -hmm. and what it takes to connect with them what what right. do they feel is a connection you know? but let, let me go ahead and put it out there and okay. i don't know if somebody was already thinking it and is about to type it in but let's be honest and, and i gotta put i gotta put it all out there because i know you you'll be quick to say men are emotional um women women this is particularly important many times for women because I think men tend to uh, emote through sex, the sexual act. Like that kind of opens up, you know, that emotional part of them. And women, many times, um, that emotional um, connection, sometimes a little bit more abstract, and that might lead them or, or shall I say, open the pathway to them being more submissive into having sex. Now, so, so I had to say that because that is something that I think some people would agree with me. But unless you're just of the mindset, and I'm sure there's some people out there that they could just have sex and there doesn't have to be emotional connection, mm -hmm. um, that, that, that might be something totally different. But if you're in a marriage, I would think that in order to really completely give of yourself, I, I remember when I finally figured out that sex is not physical. It's very much so mental, and and that mental is tied to your emotional side. Go ahead. I can see you got something burning in your belly. Go well, on for well, it. I do want to say this. It doesn't always have to be emotional. Okay. For? Um, for either. Okay. I'm listening. Um, and the reason that I say that is because that goes to the notion that um, everything has to be romance. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? I mean... If 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 people gotta go through jumping through hoops just to get you in the mood, that that becomes old too. You know, sometimes it's just a you know, hey, you know, but let's baby, have a but, quickie. But listen, but listen, I think you're getting something mixed up here, and you know, yeah, this might be a very interesting uh, conversation today because y'all might find it there might be a whole lot of stuff we're disagreeing on today. Just because I say emotion doesn't necessarily equate romance. Well, e when I say emotion, I mean when a woman feels whether it be emotionally secure because she trusts. Trust is a biggie for her. Um, where she feels appreciated, where she feels affirmed, where she feels like throughout the day. Because a lot of times, for, I know for women, let me just speak for the women because I don't see them saying a whole lot right now. But I'm going to try to do the best I can. Okay. But y'all can step in whenever you want. When you're dealing with other issues in your relationship mm -hmm. as a woman, I can only speak as a woman, and whether it be 
you know, he didn't do what he was supposed to do, or he's been trifling, or he's been this. And don't get me wrong, I'm not even getting into the part where what my duties are biblically. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, a, when a woman is going through so much, let's say she comes home from work, um, you got the kids there, and he's just sitting waiting for her to be done with cooking and cleaning and bathing the kids and this and that and such, and then he just waiting in the bedroom, like, oh, baby, I'm glad you done. You ready for, no, I'm not ready. No, my mind is not right. Because all I've been doing is still carrying whatever from work. Like I'm fatigued. I'm tired mentally, emotionally, physically. I've had to do this. And so if he, and this could go either way, because I know in some households, you know, the roles may be changed. But whoever is not feeling necessarily appreciated, you're when, by the time it gets to that, emotionally, you feel like bankrupt. You're not going to want, oh, yes, I'm getting some feedback. And I know you want to say something, but I'm glad my people are talking. Yeah, um, I see a, a yeah. from Dr. Hodge. Let's see what she said. She, she said, said mm -hmm. you must learn what romancing and finessing for each, for each partner. partner. Yeah. Um, and I agree. I agree with you. Um, um, there is there is a slight difference. I Okay, let me just tell you from the perspective I like to come from. Okay. I like to rule out all excuses. Here we go. I'm just I'm just Here we go, y'all. Let me just let me buckle myself in. I like to get rid of all excuses. Okay. See because sometimes I think when we don't really want when we don't really want to do something, we'll come up with all kind of reasons not to do it. And so when you can remove all the excuses, that's why I like that first question. Is connecting emotionally before you have sex important to you? And if it is, how do I do that? How do I connect with you emotionally? So once you tell your spouse how the connection needs to take place and your spouse is, is doing those things, if you really don't want to do it, I promise you, you're going to come up with another excuse. And I'm glad you're saying and that. So, and so mm -hmm. this is the thing I think, and I'm not going to say I think, I know because of people I work with, there are too many excuses going on there are too many reasons why it's not ever the right time. You know what I'm saying? No matter what the scenario is. And so sometimes people want some, Hey, what can I, what can I sink my teeth in? What can I stand on? Okay. What can I depend on? You know, right. Why is it, why are you so fickle? Let you know, me respond to that. Wife, yes. You, know? you bring up a very good point. And I think this, we have to say this, mm -hmm. there are so many different slices to this cake. Mm -hmm everybody's situation is different and right. we have to address those situations. Mm -hmm. And when we're talking about, and baby, you always say this, you'll, we'll be having a conversation and I'll say something about men. You're like, right, babe, I'm a man. And I'm telling you, this is how men feel. I'm a woman mm -hmm. and I'm just going to go ahead and read the other women comments mm -hmm. um, with you. We need to, this is from Rhea Margaret. Okay. We need to feel respected, love, understood, et cetera to feel desire mm -hmm. and to want to give and receive affection. Mm -hmm. Angela says, yes, I agree with Rachel. We need a connection, a desire and admiration from the spouse. Mm -hmm. And Rhea actually touched on something I was about to say, connect, connecting via their love language. Mm -hmm. So baby, what, what I'm saying is, yes, we're not saying that there are not times where there might be someone that has been meeting that need, but you know, said person is still holding back. Mm -hmm. But what I am telling you, the way we as women are made, it doesn't mean I want some tonight, so I'm gonna do this. I think it's it's an environment, a culture mm -hmm. of trust and love and support mm -hmm. that breeds that connection. Okay. And and I think that um, um, she hit the nail on the head when she said the love language. And I didn't want to say it because I really wanted it to come from our people in the living room with us, mm -hmm. but. When you are meeting my love language, that means I, I know I feel secure because I know you care enough to take the time to do that. Right. And of course, we got to say consistency is important across the board, whether it's the woman receiving or the man receiving. Right. The, it has to be consistent. And, I, and I'm glad you all said that because I think that balance needs to be put there because unfortunately, I don't see any men on this feed. <laughs> so I'm only dealing with the, the comments of the women. Um, Listen, whatever, hopefully you can pull them out. Well, well, here's the deal. Here's the deal. And this is what I'll say to women since it's only women on this feed so far. Women, the same things you desire, please be willing to give because we feel the same way. Mm -hmm. we, 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 
if we are no longer voicing those things or if we're not voicing them, um, sometimes it's because we feel that what we are feeling and want and desire from you, you shut it down because you're more focused on your needs. And so we stop talking because it's it, we start to feel like, oh, you, you don't care about what I got to say because you're so focused on what you, you're feeling. So, and I think this is that, that level of maturity I think men, both of us, men and women have to get is that sometimes in our efforts to get what we're trying to get, we neglect the other person in giving them what they need. Facts. You see what I'm saying? And so um, I, I just like to help people with that balance. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And sometimes just know that um, the connection goes both ways. You know, um, from for the average man, when all fails, just give me some. I mean, we ain't, we ain't communicating well. But the well. thing is, you we want are, some anyway. No, 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 no. I think you're missing the point. <laughs> The point is, when all else is failing, we ain't getting along. We're not. We're, we're arguing all the time. Nothing is right. Just, just give me some. And that's interesting that you'd say that because that does go back and support what I said emotionally. Mm -hmm. Men, they, you do connect through sex, and that's why you say when all else fails, just give me some. A lot of women wouldn't nest, and I'm not saying they're not exceptions, but there are a lot of women that wouldn't just say that. Like when all else fails, just give me some. Sometimes they, they might be like, when all else fails, ju just just continue to do your chores or continue to take take care of the kids. Right. They may not well, be thinking well because, about the same thing. Well, because at that moment, and this is something I had to learn dealing mm -hmm. with people. Mm -hmm. um, at that moment, there are other things in your um, mind that is more valuable than the sex. <laughs> that's so interesting that's and, so and, deep babe. so but but listen listen to me i'm listening and i'm referring to this connection that you're saying you want right right when a man actually loves you he's mm -hmm. trying to keep a connection mm -hmm. it may not be in the form that you you're you're connecting mm -hmm. but our you know wh however we're feeling we need to stay connected to you if you start cutting off all those ties because you don't feel that you're not this and you're not getting that you're and so what you're essentially doing is just cutting all of the connections connection points for him mm -hmm. then where are you going to be now you have two people who neither one of them feel connected that just doesn't go anywhere positive and it goes back to what i said earlier sometimes we're so focused on getting what we want we're failing to give what our significant other needs yeah and i think that that's that's that balance that we need to have and i think that's a really good conversation to have like what what can i do and right. what can i do um um to to actually connect with you emotionally and 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 i'm not saying just to have sex i'm just saying right. just connect general, period. Right, just to connect so so when i look at you or, or a, a wife looks at her husband she feels she or he feels like, man, you know, I love that girl or man, I love that man. You know, that feeling is there that that right that that is the natural response. When right. You look right. At your spouse, rather than it being something other than that. When you and look and at, here's you know? the thing. I think a lot of women feel like for men, sex is the destination. Like that is what's on their mind. And that's what they want to get. When in actuality, that connection is a journey thing. You're you're doing whatever it is. Um responding to one another's love language mm -hmm. and when you do that you automatically connect the sex comes by default like mm -hmm. that's going to happen given you know certain things that are in alignment when i say in alignment you know the kids are put to bed or whatever the case may be somebody doesn't have to be up late but there are a lot of comments yeah i, I wanna, see him baby I read. well let's read Angela's yeah I, I, first mm -hmm. it says not true the excuse is because our love language is not being met so loving is delayed honestly not on purpose okay and then read what sissy dr hodge yeah, said there. dr hodge says i agree with i agree with both of you however could the excuses be the result of the same same behavior being observed yes i agree with you the excuses could come from that and also think about this maybe the the lack of desire to connect with you is for the same reason because i the man is also observing the same behavior and I'm telling you, there are more men who are feeling equally as disconnected with, from their wives as the wives are feeling disconnected from the husbands. Mm -hmm. 
But the difference is women are going to keep verbally talking about it. And after men, after a period of time when a man is not getting what he keeps saying he wants or explaining that he needs, mm -hmm. he stops talking. Because in our world, in the world a man lives in, when we communicate with you, we mm -hmm. know you understood us and you are refusing to comply. Mm -hmm. That's automatically we already know where mm -hmm. we are. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. we don't we, we don't we don't waste that energy trying to convince you to keep to do something that you've already through body language, through actions showed us you're you don't plan on doing. So men will shut down. And so they, they but you know what? They shut down, like, but not enough to shut down that part of their body that still well, 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 let me, let me, let wants me, to have sex. Well, let me let me explain to you and, why. And I think you said it earlier. Well, but no, no, I didn't say this, but here's why. Don't say it. Here's then. why. If I don't get it from you as my wife, where I supposed to get it from? What they say, you supposed to pray about it? Is that what they say? The devil's alive. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I want let Listen. me. No, let no, me no, this, this, check it out. Go though. ahead, baby. See, and that's the rationale I think we we fail to have in these Let's discussions. Go. Like. Listen, I, I know we might be not on whatever one accord in this mm -hmm. area, but, you know, at the end of the day, if we flip that script around and mm -hmm. the man just decides, you know what, since you ain't meeting my needs, you know what, I ain't paying no more bills. I ain't doing... Uh, Listen, you know and that's what I was going to say. But, but what I'm saying is mm -hmm. that would resonate more with, with the person because in, 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 in another person's mind, oh, well, well, that's different. No, it's not different. The thing is, that just means a little bit more to you than you feel it means to your Listen, spouse. Listen, our people are saying some stuff that I think is so deep, mm -hmm. and it was something that I was about to say, and I'll go back to Angela's comment. Which one? Um, Angela has a comment, but before I say hers, it says, uh, Dr. Hodge says, right, so then it becomes reasons why there is a disconnection. And then Rhea said, same, and women shut down the same. Mm -hmm. um, same for an emotional connection. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is... and. <laughs> Here's what, here's just been the issue, I guess, probably since the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. The woman feels justified. Like, mm -hmm. here are the reasons why I can't connect. Mm How am I going to give this man my, of myself and he hasn't boom, 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 or he treats me like boom, boom, boom. And the man's like, you know, why, why would I do make her feel this way if she don't want to give me none? I hadn't had none. Or, or in, she's being disrespectful. She's being disrespectful she to me. I hadn't had none in two, three months. I mean, what kind of foolishness is that? And so for you guys, like you said, mm -hmm. your shutdown might be, uh, I know I will no longer really talk to you. I will not connect with you in the ways you want. But that part of you, what God has put in you, that physical nature, you still want it. Mm -hmm. For women, it just manifests. It's, it's still a shutdown. Mm -hmm. It just manifests itself in a different way. Right. Um, and, and so uh, and, I, I, well, I read to, Angela first and then yeah, we're going to go to some scriptures. Because I, I think this is important. Definitely. On this one. Here's what I also want to do. Don't forget, if you want to come in the living room, you put in the chat, I want to come in the living room. Right. And we'll, and we'll send you a link. And you the other thing I want you to do, which was the second part of this question, if, baby, if you can put the question back up, was how would you like to connect? Mm -hmm. So each of you, if you can just put one way that you like to connect so that it, it allows you to be more open, you know, to having the sex that maybe your spouse wants to have. That could be through talking. That could be through, you know, one of your love languages, mm -hmm. uh, words of affirmation, what have you. But put how you best connect. Um, somebody once told me, um, love making starts first thing in the morning when you wake up and everybody's getting ready to go to school and work. And it's the words you say, it's the things you, mm -hmm. you know, for me, a lot, I'm big on tone and words. And he could say something to me. If the tone is not right, mm -hmm. I'm completely turned off. And, mm -hmm. and it, it kind of messed me up, you know, for, for a little while until we get it right. Mm -hmm. um, Angela says, wow, I'm living this right now in my marriage. I now feel his love language with the hope that my love language will be met someday. Angela, let me just give you your props right now. Mm -hmm. That transparency that you just um, exposed is, is just powerful because you are not alone. There are many people, men and women, are feeling the same way. You're doing your due diligence. You're saying, you know what, God? I'm not getting what I want or what I need, but I'm still going to do mm -hmm. what I'm supposed to do. And that's true love. 
because human nature is like, oh, you ain't giving me what I want. I ain't, you ain't going to get what you want. Mm -hmm. And that hurts when you're looking and saying, hmm, can, can, can I just get a little nibble of my love language? Mm -hmm. Can something? But you know what? All I can say for you, Angela, and you're going to come with the scriptures, God honors that. He, he recognizes that he even does. though the very person that you've become one with may not be um, right now at this time meeting uh, that language for you. He honors mm -hmm. the fact that you are because greater is our reward mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Right. Right. And and, and I, I believe this, too. And, and we've talked about this in, in, in previous shows, you know, having the ability to be mature. Right sometimes we have to go beyond how we feel and still do what's right and i'm in saying that i want you all to look at this scripture here okay. because this this one this one right here um completely um kind of dismantles our dysfunctional responses to what we're okay. not getting um first corinthians the seventh chapter three two five it says the husband should give to his wife her conjugal, her conjugal right. rights mm -hmm. and likewise the wife to her husband. For the wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. Give me a second, guys, because I know y'all what they're all thinking. They're like, come on, Is baby. that it? Is that it? No, that's We can't not stop it. it right and there. And then it goes on to say, likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. Do not deprive one another. Listen to this. Do not deprive one another, except perhaps by agreeing for a limited time that you may devote yourselves to prayer. Then it goes on to say the husband should give to, I'm sorry. Um, then it goes on to say, likewise, no, why am I skipping? Okay, here we go. Oh, there we go. But the, but then come together again so that Satan may not tempt you because of your lack of self-control, self self-control. So, so we have to realize that even when we're not getting what we want, we have a responsibility to our significant other. That's and, hard to swallow. And, and what but you, the reality yeah. is, it, it goes back to my question. But it goes if back I ain't to, getting it from you, where am I supposed to get it from? But it goes back to something you said earlier. That requires maturity, spiritual maturity on a whole nother well, level. Well, yeah. Because the human side of you, Wants like to, think about it. The human if, side if, is, is, is trying to survive. If you were to tell somebody about a scenario mm -hmm. where you're in a relationship outside of marriage, where one person is giving all the time and another person is taking, mm -hmm. most people are going to say, that's a toxic relationship. Mm -hmm. You should get out of that relationship. Right. Unfortunately, when it's under the confines of marriage, it's like, oh man, that's kind of messed up. Right. Somebody's right. breaking the rules. Right. And and let me tell you something. I, let, let me just hear for some people because because this could go on and on. Dr. Hodge says what we're talking about is security from the mate. Mm -hmm. We have to feel secure that each other is going to care for our hearts. Mm -hmm. Girl, say that. When mm -hmm. that doesn't happen, everything shuts down across the relationship. It does. Dr. Hodge, I couldn't have said that better myself. And do, and, and, you you know. have to care about somebody's heart. That's what makes us submit. That's what makes us vulnerable. But, because I know you, I, I trust right. that you're going to take care of mm -hmm. my heart. Mm -hmm. That's powerful. Here, here's, here's what's so crazy. Here's what's so crazy. Most mm -hmm. of us are reading that in the first person because we're only looking at our heart being taken care of. It goes both ways. But no, no, no. Listen to what I'm saying. If my mo if my main focus Sorry, is yeah. Take that my out. heart feeling like it's being cared for, mm -hmm. right? I'm no longer focused on making sure that your heart is being cared for. Does that make sense? Right. So if, if because what she said is on point, it's 100% sure. This mm -hmm. is what this is really yes, all about. Yes, yes. But some, the, 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 the caring part is where we're dropping the ball. We're more concerned with what we need right. than what the need of our spouse is. And you know what, baby? The, here's what's so deep. And, and y'all, you know, if, if I'm on point, you know, give me some hearts. If not, give me some sad faces. But here is what is so hard. And I see someone saying that was the broken piece in their marriage. Mm, Lee, Lee, yeah. It is so hard. Mm -hmm to put yourself and in my first marriage i guess i can speak for this because i experienced that as well it is it is one of the hardest things you ever have to do is to you're trying to do 
what's right. Mm -hmm. You're thinking to yourself, yes, I'm supposed to be giving. I'm supposed to be Mm self-sacrificing. I'm supposed to be this. But as a human being, you are to the point where you're like, how much of myself must I lose Mm -hmm. in order to be able to fulfill someone who is not taking the time to fulfill me? Right. And that is why. And is that coming from God or do you think that's coming from the devil? Oh, definitely from that, from from the devil. But here's what's deep about that, babe, Mm -hmm. is that when you are with someone that does not have, they may have not been like that before. Right. Mm -hmm. But at some point in the course of your relationship, Mm -hmm. things have taken a turn and you're trying to imagine a life, Mm -hmm. a life, better or worse, till death do you part, Mm -hmm. where you are the constant one that is giving and someone else is taking. Mm -hmm. And let me just say this, guys, I'm not sitting up here telling y'all like I have cracked the code, but I really believe that is where the growth in our personal relationships with God right. takes its place. It does. That it is does. the only way. It does. And l- let me just say this too, because it is so important that we can see these things um, from another dimension. Because, you know, I've often shared that relationships in it, you know, sh- are in three dimensions. Okay. It is your your experiences your spouse's experiences and then the experience for the marriage mm-hmm. now if you're not operating in the experience for the marriage you're you're lost in translation because you're only focused on your experience right right so you're not looking at what's best for the marriage you're only looking at what's best for me and i'm not getting that so now this is how i'm responding to it and it's normally always unhealthy you know what I'm saying? Your our responses are normally always unhealthy when we're focused on only receiving our needs. Because when you you said something that was so key, you said it may not have always been that way, but how many people question, well, what changed? Right. What what changed? What made this situation what change? change? Who changed? Who cha- how did it change? You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because what was see, the precursor the to that change? The reason that we hate answering asking that question is because sometimes we might find that we're the guilty party. You might you just might you, be. You might find out, oh man, I facilitated this behavior because of some things that I was doing or not doing, you know? And so mm. we we have to be mature enough to be honest to say, you know what? Let me really, really reflect on what's been going on in our relationship and see how have I been playing a role in wherever we are, you know, because too many times we just take that other position, like we're the victim. And, you know, I'm glad you said that, honey, because that's actually how I got through, even though I ended up divorcing, that is how I got through my first marriage when things weren't going right, when it felt like I was giving so much and had nothing left. I decided I have to focus on me, even though at that time it felt so unfair. Mm-hmm. I said, let me, let me read, let me pray, let me spend time with God. Because guess what? Regardless of how this ends, mm-hmm. if I leave this relationship, I'm taking me with it. Mm-hmm. If I don't leave the relationship, I want a good me to be able to benefit this relationship. Right, right. So so I think what you say is so key and there's some great comments out so, there. So let me just say this before I read this comment. This is from my, my, my good friend, Dr. Hodges. And you know, um, you know, she's over here writing all these posts and you know, these comments <laughs> that are extremely powerful, but she won't come on in the room. So she needs to go on. She need to come, come on in the come room. Come on in the room and let some people see you because guys, the reason that I want you all to see her is because she does do counseling and she's another resource, you know, cause I'm, I'm not naive enough to believe that everybody would like the way that I, you know, work with couples right, or right. the way that Rachel and I work with couples, you know, we always want to give you guys choices, you know what I mean? But l- listen to what she says. She says, one of the major issues is that we look to our mates to fulfill us instead of adding to us. Yes, ma'am. The Lord already made us whole for our mate and we should not look to them to bring us this happiness and satisfaction um, with our lives. And I agree with you wholeheartedly. She says, some people replace needs with must haves and wants. When it does, when it does, then the, when it does, then the self, self and pride, pride is, is the priority. priority. Exactly. That's powerful. Yeah. And so, so my thing is, you know, I, I'm, I fully believe that when you are a whole person, 
you don't really need much from your spouse. Mm. What happens is you're just looking for them to add to. Like, for instance, if you got money and a person comes in with some money, now you all got a good pot. You only notice a problem when you got money and they broke and now you finding out that you broke. That's when it's a problem. We're broke. Let me let me give a. a yeah, we're broke. To, we're, we're broke bro together now because you ain't got nothing. Because you, you ain't got nothing to bring, bring to the table. Here's how I like to think of it. I always say that whole "you complete me" thing. Mm -hmm. That's just never been something I've subscribed to. Yeah. I, um. Oh, I, oh. What's that? You mean to tell complete you? No, babe. You don't complete me because here's what I truly I believe. Feel you. You can't. I, you are a compliment Ooh, to girl, me. Girl, you almost not messed it up, didn't you? you no, you are a compliment to me. Okay. It's kind of like, like I, I don't want to build the house. I just, I want the house, I want it to have a good foundation. Mm -hmm. I just want to put the curtains on, you know, and, and, and dress it up. And it should be a compliment. Think about it this way. Mm -hmm. if, if it's 50-50 and I'm depending on my other 50 from you, right. let's say, God forbid, you let the enemy take over as you do sometimes. <laughs> and you decide today I'm not giving you my 50. Wow. And I think that's what Dr. Hodge is getting at. Mm -hmm. That's not something I should have ever given to you right. to feel whole or to feel complete I agree. as an individual. Mm -hmm. However, I do understand the need as a unit mm -hmm. to have balance mm -hmm. within your relationship. Mm -hmm. So when one person is not holding up their own and meeting the love language and doing the things that you would expect in a marriage that has been united under God, then that's when you're going to have some serious problems. And, or it, and it doesn't topple you. It doesn't topple because, you. But, because you were not in need right. of them doing that. But here's the, here's the blessing. Let me just say this. Mm -hmm. If each of you are 100, 100, that sounds like 200%. That sounds like more than what you need for the times where when it's low ebbs and flows, like yeah. when, when, when that meter goes down, yeah. right. you have enough to kind of cover. And, and and vice versa. But I think the problem happens when one person has literally completely shut down. And let me just put plug this in. Mm -hmm. If you are in a relationship where you do feel like it's been quite some time that you have been meeting the need of that individual and you have not see, uh, sought out counsel, mm -hmm. you need to. Because all it's going to do after a while, you know, you can be praying and, and doing your own self-analysis. And I like to say this so I can cover all bases. You could be doing all that, but after a while, resentment will yeah, start to gonna, set in. Because you're like, well, shoot, I've been doing all this. And then, and God forbid, you know, a little fine shorty come, you know, or he's at work and, you know, he's paying you attention and, mm -hmm. and, and meeting your love language and complimenting you, this, that, and the other. The struggle becomes real. This they is relationship. Shot. Yep. Then we go get shot. I said, there y'all go get shot. That's how, that's how that stuff is. Oh, going. Lord. What? But but but, but you, you understand what I'm saying. People, we need y'all to come on in the room. You know, they're not coming in. She says, yes, abundance. Mm -hmm. They're not coming in, but we're going to talk about There's some things that are being said, and I think everybody needs to hear it. We appreciate all the people that have been joining us thus far. We are talking about sex. The question, baby, if you can put the question back up there, is connecting emotionally before you have sex important to you? How would you like to connect? Um, Dr. Haas says she loves our energy. Hilarious. She says, facts, 50% of a man is called a boy and 50% of a woman called is called a, a girl, girl. And we should not be in a relationship with children. Dr. Hodge, you just gave me goosebumps. Lord, have mercy. I'm going to tell you about it. I'm a, Lord, I'm have mercy. She's she trying to drop bombs on she's, our She's dropping. Me. Listen, drop them. Rochelle says, yes, you got to have a structured foundation. Mm -hmm. If there are cracks, who knows what will creep in? And guys, let me tell you something. After over, I don't know, 20 plus years of just marital experience, I realized more and more that it truly is about me doing my own self-analysis. And I could, Jimmy Rogers, what, baby? Jimmy Dwayne Rogers I'm Jr. I'm giving you my undivided here's, here, here's the problem with this. Pause. <laughs> Let's just pause for just a second. You see how you just looked at me? Baby, I'm giving you my attention. What when you, you should have been, said, oh, wow. been doing, you should have been over there marinating on the self-analysis <laughs> that you need to take your tail through. I'm being transparent. And what I'm saying is 
God has used this man in all his glory uh, and thunder uh, to help me uh, do the analysis that I need to do. Because mm. at the end of the day, I want to live the rest of my life with him. Mm. How? But if not, God forbid, one of us is taken away from one another. Oh, you're talking about through I, death? I want through death. Okay. What I have you? Nowhere. Yeah, I know, baby. Yeah. You, you told me. You st I'm stuck with you. That's right. Um, I want to know, you know, at the end of the day, I'm still living with me. I have to do the work in order to be able to get to a point of where I feel like I'm pleasing God. Because you may not always please that mate, especially if they're not. Let, let's just say this. If your mate, if you and your mate are not even walking together, I got you. If you're not walking together in the same direction, can what is it? Can two walk together lest they be agreed? Mm -hmm. So you have to even be on the same page. And is it possible? To have started on the same page, but after years of marriage or months of marriage, people are going in different directions. It's possible. It's yeah. possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to go to another question. How many times a week mm. would you like to have sex? That's that's one of those questions that people have. Like, you know, hey, how many times a week? That's a that's a close ended question, and we're going to start with that. But then we want we want to hear the whys and just kind of like how do you how do you come to some type of agreement? Because right. because let's say <clears throat> for him it's seven. I knew you were do facts. <laughs> and for me it's two to three. Mm -hmm. Facts with me being you know um, giving. Um, at this point in my life, at the age of forty nine, um, how do you come to an agreement? So I want I want just humor us. In the chat, I want y'all to just, on average, we know there are weeks where things don't work out, life happens. I ain't trying to hear it. How many times, see, that's the problem. How many times a week would you say would be ideal for you to have intimate relations? With your significant other. With your significant other. Yeah, we had to put that, not by yourself. <laughs> Not by yourself, yeah, it don't count. but with your significant other. And and how do you even begin that conversation? Right. Of, right. you know, how many times? And, oh, wow, Kiki said four to five. That's what I'm talking about, Kiki. Wow, it's Kiki. He, okay, let me just say this. Um, those of you that are on, if you have a male friend that needs to hear this, please, please. Uh, share this with them because I'm hearing from the women left and right, and usually we have the men chiming in. Yeah, the men are silent. Yes. Do we have a crickets um no, sound? I, I don't have a we, sound? If we had a cricket sound, I would play it right now. The question is, <laughs> where mean, are the men? There is no representation. There's no representation. No male representation other than myself. I'm, I'm you just, know what? That I'm should tell. That should tell you something. The men don't want to talk about it. <laughs> they simply w just want it, right? I do it twice a week, but my husband would say, say seven. Mm. Mm -hmm. That sound that sounds consistent. Okay, Angela. Okay. Yeah, we're on the same page. Twice a week. So, so how do you go about, especially if your numbers, if there's such a disparity, right. in your numbers? Because mm -hmm. some people, you know, it's probably right on point. You know, I've mm -hmm. talked to people where it's like we be tired, we got a bunch of kids. We get it in when they when we can. And they're both still, you know, nobody's holding any kind of resentment or right, anything right. with that. Because they're obviously both of their drives are the same. Right. That's, and that's that's a blessing. Yeah, you have high desire but, and you have low desire. Yeah, but when you have, for instance, you know, um, one that would prefer seven days, another one that would prefer two. How do you come to a happy medium? Right, because my my body ain't even built up like that for seven. That's because it ain't been Especially, practicing. <laughs> There's been plenty hey, of practicing hey, hey. that's going on. I can get you right, but without just putting it out there, when you when you're going through menopause, there are just certain structures that don't have the same uh, uh, tonicity. That's because and, you haven't and, been practicing. And and. and you know what? I'm a perfect I give practice up. makes perfect. Kiki said they feel like we are just supposed to know TV. You no know, KNOE TV. We're supposed to that's like come on every day. That's right. That's K N O. Oh wow, that's wow. Right, that's Kiki. what they think, but they don't realize Kiki, like but you on point though. Four to five times. I mean, I've like, never heard you say that before. But here's the thing: what do you do when you have one person that's high desire, another person that's low desire? 
Now let's think about all the possible reasons. Right. And when we're we're talking about reasons outside of trauma or you know, some medical or you know, some psychological. Some medical or some psychological. Yeah, oh, people yeah. are asking about porn. Um, well, you know, it could be medical if a woman is going to um going through menopause, she could be having all kind of issues going on. Right. That's why I said, you know, you know, we're talking about physical yeah. trauma or you know, some some emotional some um, emotional something or the other. Yeah. Okay, um, so let's read some things from what the people are saying because mm-hmm. they they they're giving some comments, they're throwing some stuff out there. Um, Alisa says, what about porn? Okay, specifically, what do you mean, Alisa? What about porn? Yo. Are you saying porn to help you I, I increase would, that number? <laughs> I would stay away from that, you know, personally. because oh, um, it, it starts to set up unrealistic expectations yeah. and, in and, the bedroom. Right. And, I mean, no judgment on anybody right, else. Right, I mean, I, I mm-hmm. personally would stay away from it because, like, as you stated, mm. um, you start seeing some stuff on porn that your significant other is not willing to do. And it's now, like, I'm not built up now, that way. You expect right. me, to, my leg to go all the way that way. Yeah. Um, Kiki said men feel like women's supposed to know how many times. And I'm glad you said that, Kiki, because the question I want to ask is, you know, are people having those conversations? Are you having it before marriage? Exactly. You know, before or even you, during marriage. Or, that's what I'm saying. Or even yeah. during marriage, because, you know, we know sex is a part of it. Oh, you married, you're going to be getting it in guilt free, all that stuff. And some people get it in and they have no guilt before marriage. Oh, but, OK, OK. Um, She's saying, does it? Does the does the, porn hinder? Does the hinder a relationship? Of course it it will. I, I mean, can. and I'm sh- I'm sure there's some people that would disagree and and would think that it can help or has helped their relationship. Um, however, I, I just you know just through I've that's never been an issue that I've had to personally deal with, but in just talking with people who I know have it has literally ruin relationships as a matter of fact let me just and i'm not trying to be morbid or anything like that but if you guys are familiar with um the um serial killer ted bundy he in his last in his latter years before it was time for him to be put to death you know he he talked about um we studied him in in forensics when i was teaching and he was just saying that it started it from a very young age where he would look at like magazines, it's just girls with underwear. And then it progressed to, you know, harder stuff. And then he started mixing that with violence. But what he said was like, he, he, he was talking to Dr. James Dobson. He said it fueled his need to do it more and more and more to the point where he became numb when he was actually being abusive or inappropriate or extreme. He didn't, he had no gauge. Yeah. But he had no gauge. He was already a sociopath. Yeah, but so he... so I, I I am I'm not gonna blame all his behavior on porn because it... he had those. There was something in him anyway that was right. that was already sociopathic. I I agree with you. And but... I think um, I do agree that maybe watching the porn kind of gave it reality. And, and and let me say this, you're right about that, that switch, so but here's see. what I have realized in being an educator for almost 25 years. People think that sociopaths, like we identify the sociopath once they became the serial killer, but there are a lot of sociopaths right. on even, you know, as teenagers, mm-hmm. young people. And so there are sociopathic tendencies. And so when you, when you mix, and you don't even have to be a sociopath to get into porn, right. but I just use that as an example of it can truly be something that poisons or perverts mm. a, a marriage to the point where now, like that expectation, I can't even reach that. But, but here go Dr. Hodge again. Go on, go on tell us what she said. Go on, tell us what she said. Again. She says the danger in a, uh, additional AIDS is that once it no longer meets the need, then there is an unhealthy progression. Mm. That is true. And not only additional but I like to also add the word addictive because porn can become addictive. So I don't want to implement anything in my life nor my marriage that will become addictive. And especially if it's unhealthy addictions, you know what I'm saying? And I think what's a healthy addiction, love, love me, be addicted to loving me. Okay. That's okay. healthy. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Uh, and, and and be a, be addicted to to wanting to 
um, emotionally support me and all those things. Those are some addictions that most of us try to try to stay clean right. Because what it is is when I think of the word addiction, mm -hmm. I think of the word because there are some addictions that if if you weren't doing it so much, mm -hmm. it wouldn't be bad because it actually is a normal healthy thing. Right. But addictions can get in the way of your normal day to day life. It can it can cause you to whether it be lose a job or things of that nature. Mm -hmm. I don't have the list in front of me mm -hmm. of addictions, but I do think that sometimes you here's what's funny about addiction. And I could speak just a little bit on it because it's it's run in my family, um, not porn addiction, but just other addictions. And you don't decide. It's not like you're saying, oh, I'm going to be addicted to this. Right. You don't know how something might affect you. Right. People who are addicted don't sign up for the addiction. Right. They just sign up for whatever the for whatever that that, act, that, that thing was. was. Right. That excitement. And then it was high, like, that wait, because right. the way the brain works, the pleasure center in your brain. It doesn't care. It just wants more of that feeling mm -hmm. because it felt good. And many times it can become damaging. Right. Um, she says, um, the word addiction alone means it is unhealthy. That's right. what I thought. Right. Addicted to loving you is being a stalker. <laughs> <laughs> Thank no, you, no, Dr. No. Hodge. Dr. Hodge, Thank I'm talking you. about your spouse. No, but I but but right. I, I hear what she said is what I was thinking. When you think about addiction, right. It, it takes something that could be okay. Stop it, Dr. Hodges. And then it takes, she actually confirmed what no, I'm always saying no, about she, you. When oh. we, when you were interested in me, stalker, Girl, stay tuned. No stay stalker tuned. Me. That's just another show oh, for another day. Stalker. But yes, you're exactly right. The addiction is unhealthy. You have to have balance in your life. Because here's the thing. If you're so busy loving on somebody else, you might you might have neglected the children. You might have neglected friends. You might have neglected other family members. You might be neglecting. So you do have to have balance in your life as it relates to the see, things see, that you see do. See how black people try to take stuff and just mess it up. Baby, up. you said what you said. I you did, said I ain't said nothing wrong that. with the addiction. And, and now loving me. Love me. Be addicted to loving me. Baby, just at this point, she just, the doctor just said it's unhealthy. That word. Pick another word, baby. Pick another word. Uh, look at her. <laughs> what she said. Oh, Ray. <laughs> Yes, but um, there was some other comments here I wanted to, because we kind of started talking about porn. Um, she talked about the danger. We we were just talking about how often. I think at the end of the day, you know, me and my husband had this conversation. He was like, oh, you know, if, if one person wants seven times a week and the other person wants two times a week and you end up doing it three or four times a week, then it's kind of like not romantic anymore because then you're counting to see how many times. So the person who who wants it last they're like well i did my three or four so i don't need to do it no more meanwhile leaving the other person notice i'm pointing to him leaving the other person like yeah no shoot that. i could still get it some more i don't think i think the compromise is unique from person yeah, to I person agree. but i do think relationship from relationship to relationship mm -hmm. but i do think the conversation is necessary because when you don't like it, it's necessary if people are not being pleased exactly sexually like exactly. if it's if it's just working then great. But if people are not being pleased, but how do you know? So I think it's even important to have those like, baby, am I pleasing you? Do you feel like you're getting it enough? See, I'll never ask you that question because I already know the answer to Whoa. it. You've answered that several Rachel, times in our Rachel, lives. You should still have the conversation. Baby, we've had it. We have it all the time. I mean, we have it. I mean, don't assume, there goes some relationship real talk for don't you. Don't assume you know how I feel each day. Baby, mm -hmm. you've already said to me that if you got it every day, you would be just fine. Right. At that time, so, that's what I meant. So, and and you, that time was this morning. Like, we just Richard, had that conversation again. I didn't say that. This yeah. Morning. Seriously. Okay. I, didn't, I didn't say that. We well, talked we, about it. We did discuss it. And you said seven. You no, have you, always, you gave me the number seven. Yeah. I never chose the okay. number seven. Okay. Sidebar, guys. But you have, you have always said every day. You've always said every. If and, you could and, have it every day, you let, would. Let, let me be clear. And nothing has changed. That, that, so <laughs> why are y'all pray for me? Because I do y'all see what I have to go through. Nothing. Has so changed. just because I didn't, you didn't actually verbalize it this morning, and I said it. Mm. You're confirming what I said. I, I wanted to affirm you. Oh my god. Yes. Every day. Y'all pray for me. But but yes, at the end of the day, you do have to have the conversation. Um, and, and let me fan? just. Where's my fan? It's downstairs. I'm hot. Cyber, uh, you would be hot. But let me just say this, and and I think we talked, we touched on it a little bit, and it's not necessarily when I que one of our questions, but I do think it's important to mention. If you grew up in the church, 
Christian, it doesn't matter oh, what. Yeah. You, especially as women, you know, guys, it doesn't seem, or I have not heard, he's a clown, Lord. He is, he <laughs> is. Y'all just pray for my ministry. Um, the, the thing, um, she says, I think I might be too young for this conversation <laughs> while covering my ears. Yeah, right. Um, but the thing about it is, as Christians, you are, we're raised with the notion of, mm -hmm. A, you're not supposed to have sex before marriage. All right. Biblically, biblically, okay. you're not supposed to have sex before marriage, gotcha. but the notion that sex is bad. Right. And so, and, and we live during a time, especially our generation. I know with my mom, there was no, let's sit down and talk about sex. Mm. That conversation was not happening. And it wasn't because my mother wasn't just a wonderful person and woman of God. I don't even think she was comfortable. Like I remember asking her about, you know, did she plan on having five kids? And it was like, pretty much, she didn't plan it. It just, how did she say it? It's like, it, you know, it just kind of happened. <laughs> she didn't use those words. I don't want to put her words out there, but, and I'm just like, wow. So here we are being raised in this culture of where sex is bad. So you finally, it's like all of a sudden you sign the paperwork, you're before the um, person that's marrying you, you know, kiss the bride. And now whether you've been having sex or not, now it's automatically legit. Your brain doesn't automatically trigger and say, oh, it's legit, so I won't have any um, guilt or inhibitions or anything of that nature. That stuff still carries along. So I think it is important as parents, as individuals, to have healthy conversations about sex with your children as it relates to everything, you know, not just you know, whether it's, you know, right or wrong before marriage or not, but just their sexuality and understanding that if they have an unhealthy view of it, it can actually carry on t with them in their marriage. And, and, and again, um, back to the Christian beliefs um, and understandings, a lot of times we have been told things by people in our spiritual communities that we respect that are not biblical. Um, we know people who didn't even want to have sex on the same day of worship. Lord have mercy. They were taught that that was not or uh, wait. healthy or sex was only meant for to reproduce. For procreation. Right. Yes. And I'm like, the devil's a lie. But then that means I'd have about 100 babies at plus. Listen. Um, I'm sorry, y'all. The deal, the deal is, and, and that's why I wanted to kind of bring this other scripture up, because I, I want people to understand what, what, you're God, what God actually said. You know what I'm saying? Right. Versus what people have said. While you're pulling that up, let me mm -hmm. read what Rochelle said. She says, you got to be able to handle the truth and not be offended over this. Mm -hmm. Goes back to the trust to trust uh, that he has your back at 100. Right. Um, right, right. Good evening. Good evening. Those of us, those of you who just joined us. So, I so mean, look, listen to this. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 13, 4, it says, let marriage be held in honor among all and let the marriage bed be undefiled. Yes. For God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. So in other words, what this scripture reminds us is that, you know, what you and your spouse are doing in that bedroom, it's, it's honored. It's blessed. It's undefiled. Y'all have fun. And it is. And then even when we go to Proverbs, there are some scriptures in Proverbs. I mean, Solomon. I'm going to say Solomon because yeah, he was Solomon. doing all kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, the deal your is. Your breasts are yeah, like. And, and it says that you should enjoy your wife in her youth, you know, and talking about her breasts and all this stuff. We have been in the Christian community. We yeah. have been conditioned to believe some lies That's right. about things that are supposed to bring bring us pleasure. You know, that's why Ooh. I said what I said earlier, all the time, sex in and of itself in the context of marriage is not about feelings. Sometimes it's just like, you know what? I'm stressed. Are you stressed? Those are stress stressed. You hear what me. he's saying? He's telling the truth. I'm just I need, saying. See, here's what's funny. For, what's funny. He tells me all the time when he has sex, it helps him relieve stress. And for me, the thought of it can sometimes be stressful, especially after a full day. Women, don't let me sit here alone on this. If you feeling me, I need some hearts. I need some love. I need some write-ons in the comment, please. Because nobody wanted to come on in the living room, and I still hadn't seen the men. 
But sometimes it be some it, of these people haven't put no numbers. Up yes, either, but like, but it becomes more stressful just thinking about it. And I tell them all the time, it's not that I, I'm not going to enjoy it. It's just that it's kind of time to be on after I have been on all day. But yeah. um, I was about to bring up a really good point as it related to what you were saying. Um, marriage is it's undefiled, and um, he will bring judgment on the sexually immoral. Oh gosh, it was a re- oh, that's what I was gonna say. You know, and these very same people that are um preaching this, like <laughs> we look to our pastors, you know, and we have this image of them like they are holy. Yes. Um, in its most ideal sense, you know, you think of your pastor as a man of God, somebody who he's a shepherd, somebody who God has he has been called, chosen to to preach God's words, to minister to people, what have you. And I'm not saying start looking at your pastor in this way, but even a pastor Mm -hmm. who is married, both male and female, both male and female, they have desires. They have desires and they want like when it's time to get in that bed, they want what they want to fulfill them. Mm -hmm. They don't want that. Well, you know, we're only supposed to do missionary style because, you know, missionary equates with Christian, you know, Christianity. So like they really want you to be a freak. And um, and then we wonder why sometimes, and this is no shade on no pastor, because I'm not here to judge anybody, but we wonder why sometimes um relationships struggle within with pastors and their spouses, and it can go either way, male or female, right. um, because the satisfaction is not there. Who do they talk to? Who do they reach out to? They know they're not supposed to dip out, they know this. That's a really tough thing, and we've got to stop judging people who are um sexually alive within their marriage exactly you know it's like exactly. it's so taboo that's right oh gosh did we just say the word sex i don't want my children to think that right. i never want them to think that because when they get married even though i don't want to think about that i don't want them to be stifled because i want them to have a happy marriage me too me too and and, and um and guys and that's what we desire from you all that's why we had um, this conversation today, because we want you and your significant other to have an open and honest conversation about this subject. And again, go back to the uh, description. The description has some links in there because there are different things about sex that came up through some of these questions. And I, I mean, the time just flew by. It really did. And and so uh, we didn't get to all of the questions that we had, but um, um, we have a, two links that we would love for you guys to read those articles. They're not extremely long articles. They're very short reads, but they're very And one of them reads. has more questions for you. Right. One of them for has more you. questions. That first that first link, One Extraordinary Marriage, um, has some some um op- some questions that you could use to, to start your conversation with your significant other. And I right. think it'll be very, very powerful. Um very, very powerful for you all. And um let uh, me say this, mm-hmm. and this might open up a whole nother can of worms. But, you know, that with that scripture, when we say the marital bed is undefiled, mm-hmm. um, you I think there's a certain level of respect that has to take place as to what y'all are going to do. Like, can, can we have toys? Can we not have toys? Is, is oral sex OK? Is it not OK? Both people in that relationship, when it comes to like something new that's introduced or something that you weren't used to, mm-hmm. you got to be willing to have that conversation because th- let's be honest especially when you've had sexual relationships before your marriage Mm -hmm. that was not with that person. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can bring, I call it residue, Mm -hmm. uh, but you bring it and you're, you're hoping that your partner might want to do this. And sometimes you may not ever have the conversation, but you introduce it and that person is uncomfortable with it. And so there just has to be a back and forth kind of washing through that conversation of, okay, baby. So I'm not comfortable with that but I am comfortable with this or I'm comfortable. I think I can get there, but can you give me some time mm-hmm. or you know what? I how, absolutely. How time? I, yeah. Do y'all see this? <laughs> just, look, y'all no, see what I got to deal I'm with? Just, I'm just asking the question. Woo. That's what we're going to want. But, but you know, there just has life. to be like, and it sounds so mechanical. It sounds so, but you know what? Actually it's mature, Rachel. But, but, but I know I agree with you. Listen, I you you need to know what I like just like I need to know what you like. You need to know what I don't like just like I need to know what you don't like. Now, how could I ever know those things if you didn't share them? You, you understand what right. I'm saying? Right. Or if I didn't ask them. So <laughs> I'm going to ask. So, you know, what you like. 
That's why it's so important to change the mindset of this is bad or right. this conversation is bad to have. Right. I mean, I'm sure there's some couples that use some words in while they're in the bedroom that they may not use when they walk in these streets. Like what? All right. You see how you're a little troublemaker. <laughs> don't let me put, put you out there, Elder Rogers, uh, in your words. You don't want to do that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is that's why that mindset is so important, even going into these conversations. Uh -huh. But I know some people are probably thinking about it. Baby, do you want to take this time to um, kind of address, you know, one of the elephants that might be in the room? No, we, we're, we're going to wrap this up. We're going to let them read about it. Because, I mean, I know. See, now that I, it, I already know some questions out there, but we're going to let them said, read about it. <laughs> Derek said, Rachel, you just said a mouthful. <laughs> Listen, let me tell y'all something. I've been on this earth, you know, I don't know how many more years I got, but I'm so over. Um, so many people walking around hurt or mm -hmm. in so many situations where I just wish somebody had given me some counsel. Yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. we have to be transparent. We have to be honest because at the end of the day, marriages and relationships are being broken because all in the name of pride, right. all in the name of, oh, I don't want to put myself out there like or, that. Or, or simply fear. She said, Dr. Hodge says, talk and share and keep talking and sharing. Likes change like seasons. Right. It does. <laughs> yes. It does. I mean, because, yes. because you know, what I didn't like last year, I may have changed my mind on this year. Right. Or what I said I would never do, you end up doing. You know what I mean? That's right. So we have to keep those See, conversations. Dr. Hodge says, plant the seed. You can't just stop it here. There you go. And now I think she's talking about what you said. You didn't want to uh, continue to. It was something I told you to if you were gonna bring it up and you said you weren't gonna bring it up, they're gonna have to read about it. I think that's what she's talking about. Mm -mm, that's not what she's talking about. Okay, she can tell us that's what she's talking about. But but like she said, she says, talk and share and keep talking and sharing. Mm -hmm. Likes change and the seasons change. And I totally agree with that. And at the end of the day, if you want to please your significant other, of course you gotta have stop worrying about how they're gonna look at me. Right. What well, well, they already looking at you in every kind of way, inside and out, from head to toe. Well, well, not only that, physically. I mean, my thing is, my thing is the goal in marriage is for the two in that union to be extremely happy. That's right. And fulfilled. That's right. You know, and once that is achieved, the uh, problems minimize you know quickly. Right. You know, um, so so I think we got to get beyond those internal fears. Dr. Hodge has um, spoken. Yeah, I saw it. I, he tried, I, you're I, trying to ignore it. Tried to ignore it. Jimmy but, Rogers. But, listen, yeah. we got we got some people on and, and, and I've been watching the numbers. They have not been declining. Well, yes. And, well, and, well, what's going on? The, the last the, the last question we had was, is anal sex something you would be willing to try? Because, of course, that is one of the subjects about sex that people always ask. And so I'll just say this. Um, in my research, biblically, I have found nothing in the Bible that talked about anal sex, right? The only, However, the only mm -hmm. story that would lead one to believe it could be anal was the story of Sodom and Gomorrah when the when the um, men in Sodom were trying to hit on the angels and the angels blind them. So we know that that had to be about, you know, that was homosexuality, right? Mm -hmm. But um, because there were no supporting scriptures in, in the Bible talking about it, you now have to look at other sources to ensure if this is something wise or healthy to do. And so if you read the link, Click on the link that's in the description concerning that subject. It will educate you on what that's all about and the effects that it could have on a person physically, emotionally. Yeah, it even talked about stuff. physiologically yes, yes. when it comes to bacteria that right. lives in all that part of the body being introduced to another part. Right. All and those so things. all those things are very, very important. And I really do want people to be educated. Um, and, and, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying with all those facts that you're going to read that somebody's not willing. I'm just saying this, that when you love someone, if I, and I'm telling Rachel, I love her and she's, 
let's just say that's one of the things I want to do and she doesn't want to do it, right? And now I know all this information. Why would I want to subject her to that? You, you see what I'm saying? And so for me as a man that, who loves his wife, that's not something I would introduce to her because I understand not only um, what it does physiologically, I also understand what it does emotionally. And so I don't want to be the person who deposited into her emotional or physical demise. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I these two- It should be pleasurable. Yes. That at the end of the day. Right, and, 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 and desired, you know, right. that, that's the thing for me. And that's why I, I like the fact that, you know, that scripture talks about the bed being undefiled. If both of you all are game, I mean, hey, you know- Derek uh, said, as a nurse, it is unhealthy. It is, it is I'm extremely, with you. It is I'm extremely with you. unhealthy when you read when you read about the effects of it and all that stuff that goes along with it, you cannot come away from that. You, or it's impossible in my mind to come away from that still going, I still want to do it. You know what I'm saying? Right, I mean, so right. to me, that's that's something that I'm like, wow. But but guys, listen, it has been a pleasure as usual. You all have outdone listen. yourselves again. Dr. Hodges, we really, really and, do appreciate and, you. And honestly, we're going to have to have you on the show for real. Because there's, oh, definitely, there's some definitely. things that we would love for you to talk to our viewers about. Um, and I'm um, going to say this about the men, baby. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Men, oh. I'm going to assume that y'all are going to watch the replay of this. Yeah, and, and, and ladies. You, talk to your men. Please. Ladies, ladies. Talk to them. Next talk to week, them. Please, please talk to your husband next week so he'll join you. And I, I felt alone today. I didn't have any support. I, I felt like Dr. Hodges and Jimmy, Rachel. You and, ain't never needed and, no extra and, and support. My cousin, uh, you know, um, Darius. Yeah, she her, and Angela. Angela, mm. all of them. They was just janging on me. And mm -hmm. then uh, Miss Miss Whitley and Kiki Blue and Rochelle Strong. and other folk who you couldn't hear from home yeah. <laughs> saying yes, yes. Scroll yeah. up, but 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 yeah. it was a, a comment. Um, she said. Uh, yes, Dr. Hodge said yes. That's the stalker love right there, Jimmy. <laughs> she said, I like your segment. What is the regular schedule? Glad you asked, Alisa. Um, I hope I'm saying your name right. We are on Facebook um, at 6 p.m. Every Sunday. Every Sunday. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and... From 6 to 7 p.m. From 6 to 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. This Eastern is time. RRT Ministry, of mm -hmm. course, is the name of the, pl the platform. Yes, and but if you want to look at the services that we offer, you can go to our website, which is rrtministry.com. Instagram, RRT Ministry. Um, uh, Instagram, uh, Twitter, RRT Ministry. Well. RRT Ministry, all those things. And um, you could go back and look at some of the Previous. other previous yeah, videos lives, that we've been right. doing they're going to be right here on this page she says poor jimmy <laughs> yes you are <laughs> yeah listen let me tell you everybody's got a ministry mm. i have more than one and this one right here next to me happens to be one of them you know one of the things that i you know i, I do agree with you on that wholeheartedly i i will be one of the few people in heaven with two crowns and why is that because i'm married to you baby i mean god is like look boy you did that Listen, every the star on your crowns come from everybody you brought to the Lord. So the, I'm only one person. Listen, the stars mm -hmm. gonna be on both crowns. One uh -huh. one crown gonna be full of stars just because. Listen, I'm gonna have to build up my neck muscles <laughs> because my crown gonna be heavy. <laughs> she said, "Do you all do Zoom?" Yes, yes, we do. Yes, Zoom. we do. Uh, um, Melanie, we 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 do. We use that. Um, so. Um, Tell them how they can get in touch with us if they well, do want to. If if you are interested in you know talking to myself or Rachel and I, um, please feel free to um, email us at contact at rrcgroup.org. I put it in the um, thing. Yeah, contact at rrc.org. Send us an email. RRC a, or RRC group, maybe. Contact at rrc group. There we go dot org dot org yeah, what yes. and um and then we will um definitely get back with you um and schedule um a session with you and um and our goal is really to help you as an individual as well as a couple take your life and relationship to the next level um, and, and I just, I tell people this all the time, just because Rachel and I are doing this, mm -hmm. we have this platform. It does not mean 
that um, we she, are exempt. That she's perfect. See, see how he still... speaks. See <laughs> how he's doesn't mean we are exempt. No, and, we're and not. I truly believe that. And I told Jimmy, I'm like, he has given us this ministry to keep us together. Exactly. And and not because... and, and, you know, and all jokes aside, I honestly believe this is a tool God is using mm -hmm. to help me become a better husband i'm so proud of you for that because that's the first time during this broadcast that you just reflected on just you well, well, that i am proud of well, baby you're welcome. but but you're yes welcome. it's i mean we are all a work in progress yep. and um you know because the older i get i you know my tolerance for foolishness is minimized mm -hmm. um yeah. however god is like i'm still working on you and i have a great work for the for you both so we have answered his call and we are being obedient. God willing, we will continue to be obedient to his call and obedient to one another. Amen. And guys, again, thank you all so much for joining us today. It has truly, truly been a pleasure. And until next week, peace. Holla.